It was a normal day, and uh, you know, for the first time, uh, the policeman at the passport control said there was a problem with my visa uh, and my passport, um, and uh, he took me in a special room uh, where I was supposed to clear this with uh, the employee in charge. And in fact, the person I met was the Tokyo prosecutor. Uh, who told me that, uh, you know, there is a problem uh, which is relative to my compensation and he would like to interrogate me. And then when I said, well, you know what, I need to make a phone call because some uh, people are waiting for me, he said, uh, you can't use your phone. So all of a sudden, I knew that there was something very serious going on. The only memory I have of this moment is shock, frozen trauma. One minute you're a globetrotting chief exec, the next minute you are essentially incarcerated. What was that experience like? Where were you taken and what was it like? They uh, took me to the detention center of uh, Tokyo, which is in fact outside the city of Tokyo, which is called the Kosuge prison. And, um, you know, they stripped me of everything uh, and gave me the usual clauses of a detainee um, and I uh, all of a sudden had to learn to live without a watch, without a computer, without a telephone, without a news, without, without a pen, nothing. That means in a cell which was very small adapted to obviously the Japanese uh, standard of living, which means you don't have a bed, you don't have a chair, you just have to sit on a tatami. Japanese conviction rates are famously, I think, 99%, um, and you've called it a hostage justice system. At what point, you were then released on bail, then rearrested, then released on bail again. At what point did you decide, and why did you decide, that you had to try and escape and make a run for it? frankly tried everything in order to believe that even the trial would not be fair because the, my lawyers, my Japanese lawyers, told me, look, don't count on a fair trial. You, you're becoming a, much bigger than the case that was built up on you. But we think that uh, with all the arguments we have, with all the proofs we have, we can get you acquitted. But frankly, I started to doubt what my lawyers were telling me when I saw that uh, the prosecutors were asking for very punishing conditions uh, of uh, uh, a home residence. All of these le led me probably a few weeks before my departure to say, if I want to have any hope to have one day a normal life, I'm going to have to leave. How did you manage to concoct this plan whilst under such scrutiny? I know that Japanese don't like to be surprised, which means when you surprise them, they're not very well organized. So combining all these elements, I organized, a, I, I must admit, a very bold plan to get out, a very simple and bold plan to get out, and it was successful. And you brought in uh, two people to help you get out, under the cover of them being musicians. What was the plan? Talk us through how you actually escaped. I was very known in Japan, as you know, being a CEO of a very large Japanese company. So the plan, the plan was I couldn't find my, I could not show my face, so I have to be hidden somewhere. And the only way I could be hidden is to be in a box or in a, be in a luggage. Uh, so nobody could see me, nobody could recognize me, and obviously the plan could work. So the idea of a music box, of a large box that would be, that would contain musical instrument was the most logical, logical one particularly that around this time there were a lot of concerts in, uh, in Japan and uh, there were a lot of musicians coming to Japan to participate to this concert. Before joining the box, I needed uh, not to be detected because as you know, I departed from uh, the, uh, a, a, an airport outside from Tokyo, but I have to go there. So we used a train and we used taxis so I had to wear things that I 
never you, you usually wear. Uh, you know, shoes, watches, uh, hats, uh, coats that do not lead to any suspicion about who, who was the person. Talk us through what was it like being inside a musical instrument box and what were the most stressful moments? I'm in a box at the moment where I'm in a hotel near the airport. So this is where I get in the box. And when you get in the box, you don't think about the past, you don't think about the future, you just think about the moment. Because, uh, you know, it took me about probably one hour to one hour, 30 minutes in this box. And you need to be totally concentrated on what's going on because you don't see anything. You just can hear people around you. And you need to be ready to react no matter what happens. You're not afraid. Uh, you don't have any emotion except the, the, the huge concentration on this is your chance. You can't miss it. If you miss it, you're going to pay it with your life, uh, you know, with the life hostage in, in Japan. And the most difficult moment were, particularly when you're in a box, you're in the plane, and you're waiting for the plane to take off. And you know, uh, the plane was scheduled to take off at 11 p.m. that night. Uh, we were ready, and I was in the box in the rear of the plane, probably around 10.30. And these 30 minutes waiting in the box in the plane, waiting for the plane to take off, were probably the, 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 the longest period of wait I've ever experienced in my life. Okay, and well, uh, finally, you got out of Japan, changed planes in Istanbul, and made it to where you are now in Beirut. Did you feel a sense of triumph? Was it a bit thrilling that you had managed to uh, affect this escape? You know, when, when I landed in Beirut, obviously it was thrilling that I made it against all the odds. And, you know, you, you don't escape Japan easily. Why do you think they decided to turn on you? You were credited with saving Nissan, you became a legend in Japanese business. You had manga comics about you. You were one of the most popular people there. You were in celebrity magazines. You were riding high. When do you think the relationship with Nissan began to go bad? Why? I was conscious of the opposition. I was conscious of the fact that a lot of people in the public opinion in Japan didn't like that, didn't like the fact that the foreigner was a role model, was considered as a kind of reference in terms of management, and they resented all this publicity around me. They turned on me because they were very upset uh, by the behavior of the French state, who doubled its voting rights as a shareholder of Renault, while at the same time opposing any voting right to Nissan, so getting rid of me could happen through a board meeting, but if, if it was only a board meeting, I would come back at the head of Renault and owning 43% of the shares of Nissan, I can turn the table on them. So it was necessary that the elimination would be radical, and that's how they came to the conclusion that a legal problem would be the best solution. Do you consider yourself totally blameless? Uh, look, I, uh, nobody can say, you know, I spent 19 years heading a company and, uh, you know, there is nothing I could not have done differently. I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't exist. This being said, uh, the action and the reaction both in Japan and France has been totally disproportionate, totally irrational. If you hadn't escaped, where do you think you would be right now? I would be rotting uh, in Japan in front of a trial, uh, first trial, because there were two trials planned. First trial, you know, when I look at uh, my ex-colleague Greg Kelly, who is still being tried for one charge, which is complicity in the non-declaration of a compensation that was neither decided nor paid, he's still being tried. He has been in Japan now for two years and a half. Uh, the, I've been told that the end of the trial will be probably by the end of this year. The two people who came to assist you and get you out of jail, they have been extradited from the US to Japan and could be facing lengthy jail terms themselves. You got out. How do you feel about, do you have any regrets about the people that are still there because of you facing jail time? Uh, I feel, I feel sorry for all the people who are victim of the hostage justice system in Japan, all of them. I, I, I think uh, this 
tragedy is attracting the attention on a system which frankly not a lot of people realized when you have a prosecutor winning in 99.4 percent of the cases when you have no right to a lawyer when you are being dealt by a justice system that doesn't care about you understanding uh, because there was no translator my uh, you know friendly advice is don't go to Japan unless they change the hostage justice system because you don't know how much risk you're taking.